This week's episode has been sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stay tuned for a special offer. The upcoming A321 XLR has the potential to be a real game-changer. With a range significantly ahead of its rivals, it'll expand the possibilities of what a narrow body can do and usher in a new era for passengers. But what else do we know about this aircraft? While there are many exciting things worth talking about, here are 10 to get you started. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to our channel and get the latest long-haul episodes when they come out. New videos are posted weekly. Number 1. The Obvious it's a narrow body with an incredible range. The A321 XLR is a single-aisle narrow-body aircraft with a typical two-class capacity of 180 to 220, but it pushes the range to the highest of any narrow body, up to 8,700 kilometers or 4,700 nautical miles. To put this into context, the standard A321neo has a range of just under 6,000 kilometers. The 737 MAX 8 reaches 6,570 kilometers. While the A321 XLR is still a long way behind larger wide bodies like the A350-900, which offers a range of up to 15,000 kilometers, its range is enough to make a big difference to narrow body options. Number 2. It should enter service in 2023. While there have been some slowdowns in aircraft production and deliveries throughout 2020 and 2021, the A321 XLR so far seems to be getting through with minimal delays. It remains on course for first delivery in 2023. In February 2021, Airbus confirmed it was preparing to start the main assembly of the first test aircraft. This is taking place in Hamburg with a pilot production line in the area that previously handled assembly of front and rear fuselage sections of the A380. By April 2021, full-scale mock-ups of some parts of assembly were in place. Component assembly will take place at various Airbus facilities across the UK, Germany and France. Number 3. The A321 XLR will open up longer routes to lower-capacity aircraft. This is why there's been so much excitement over the A321 XLR. It offers new possibilities for efficient narrow-body flying. With several large orders from US carriers, there are many options for transatlantic routes as well as within the Americas. JetBlue will use the type for New York to London flights, but other European cities could also be possible. Transcontinental, Hawaii and Alaska services would also be on the table, as are routes to much of South America, including Santiago or Buenos Aires from the southern US. European operators can reach the Middle East and Indian destinations, and from the Middle East, much of Europe, Asia and Africa are possible. Air Arabia has an order for 20 aircraft, and Wizz Air plans to deploy its A321 XLRs in Abu Dhabi. And in Asia, Trans-Pacific routes are possible too. From Tokyo, the aircraft could reach Vancouver, Seattle or San Francisco, but internal Pacific routes are more likely. From Tokyo, it could connect to India, Indonesia and Australia, as well as all of China, of course. The A321 XLR will surely open up the possibilities for a number of new global routes, and if you're lucky enough to one day fly on it, it'll help to have a VPN that can keep up with you. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet, keeping your personal data protected from big companies or cyber criminals no matter where you travel. With over 3,200 servers in 65 countries, Surfshark can transport you virtually anywhere, and they don't monitor, track or store what you do online. Protect yourself online by using Surfshark to make sure that your city, country and download history aren't linked to your identity. Use the code LONGHAUL and get 83% off plus 3 extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. Click the link in the description to take advantage of this special offer. Number 4. It's part of the A320 family based on the A321neo. The A321XLR is not a new clean sheet design, 
it's the next development within the long-running A320 family. Importantly, this brings commonality for operators. Airbus has continuously adapted and upgraded the A320 since its launch in 1988. Boeing has, of course, done the same with the 737 family. The NEO, which stands for New Engine Option, was the first major upgrade, entering service in 2016. It added new engines and aerodynamic improvements, but maintained commonality. The A321LR, launched in 2015 with additional fuel tanks, increased its range to 7,400 kilometers. This aircraft is already capable of transatlantic routes and will be used by JetBlue for its service to London with an exciting new Mint business class cabin. The A321XLR will take the NEO capabilities even further with larger additional fuel tanks and strengthened landing gear for the increased weight. Number 5. It makes a great post-COVID-19 choice for airlines. The A321LR and A321XLR have been popular since their launch, but as we emerge from the pandemic, it's likely that lower-capacity, high-range aircraft will be the preferred option for many airlines, allowing them to operate point-to-point -point flights even in an environment of low demand. Large quadjets have, of course, suffered the most. The 747 has seen early retirement from many airlines, and the A380 has sat idle for much of 2020 and 2021. Smaller aircraft have returned to service much faster. Take a look at the A220's comeback, for example. Number 6. It already has over 450 orders from over 20 airlines. The A321XLR was launched at the Paris Air Show in 2019, and by mid-2020, Airbus had over 450 orders from 22 airlines and two leasing companies. Deliveries are due to start in 2023, and while we may see a few changes as airlines emerge from the slowdown in 2020 and 2021, the type remains popular. It's worth noting that these were not all new aircraft orders. Many airlines switched existing A320neo family orders over to the new A321XLR model. US airlines have the largest orders, but interest is spread globally. In the US, American Airlines, United Airlines, Frontier and JetBlue all have sizable orders. In Europe, Wizz Air has 20 aircraft on order, Iberia has 8 and Air Lingus 6. Asian low-cost operator Air Asia X has 30 aircraft on order, Vietnamese airline Vietjet has 15 and is planning to operate the type to Australia. In South America, it's once again low-cost airlines that have shown initial interest. Santiago-based low-cost carrier Sky Airline has ordered 10 A321XLRs and JetSmart has ordered 13. And there's been plenty of interest in the Middle East, with its promising location for the A321XLR range. Air Arabia has the largest order for 20 aircraft, but there are orders from FlyNAS and Lebanon's Middle East Airlines, and Wizz Air will likely deploy the aircraft in Abu Dhabi. Number 7. American Airlines and United Airlines will operate the largest fleets. Both American Airlines and United Airlines have orders for 50, that's right, 50 A321XLR aircraft. For American Airlines, 30 of these orders were conversions from existing A321neo orders and 20 were new orders. Both airlines have long operated Boeing 757 fleets and the A321XLR will to some extent act as replacements here. We're likely to see them operating the same type of lower capacity international routes that the 757 picked up. For United Airlines, this will likely be focused on transatlantic routes from hubs at Newark or New York and Washington Dulles. American Airlines will likely also focus on transatlantic routes as well as South American routes. Number 8. The A321XLR has additional fuel tanks. The extra range of the A321XLR is achieved with additional fuel tank storage. The A321LR also achieved this with several additional center tanks, but the A321XLR goes much further with a newly designed rear center tank or RCT. 
The RCT sits behind the main landing gear bay and can hold up to 12,900 litres of fuel, giving the aircraft 40,000 litres capacity in total. German company Premium Aerotech builds it and the first tank was completed in May 2021. The design maximizes the use of the lower fuselage but still allows capacity for cargo and baggage. Additional safety requirements will likely be imposed around fire protection. Another crucial redesigned component is the center wing box. This has required over 200 modifications for the A321XLR to support the additional weight and fuel lines for the RCT. Airbus completed the first box in April 2021. Number 9. Boeing does not yet offer a competitor, but it might. Several airlines are using the A321XLR as a replacement for the Boeing 757. This occupied a niche area in medium-capacity, longer-range routes. There have been discussions since 2015 about Boeing developing a new aircraft seen as a replacement for the 757, but most likely a wide-body aircraft. This so-called new midsize aircraft, or NMA, also dubbed the 797, was never officially launched, and Boeing dropped the project in January 2020. Boeing is left with a gap between the top end offered by the 737 MAX and the smallest 787. It is, of course, very likely it will develop a new option in this market to compete with the A321XLR. But it's not yet clear what, with CEO David Kaloon explaining that he wanted to understand both narrow-body and wide-body options. And number 10, crew and passengers will miss the space. We'll end with an unfortunate but realistic consequence of long-haul narrow-body flying. The A321XLR cannot offer the same space or cabin facilities that larger wide-bodies do. The extra space on the largest aircraft has seen the introduction of bars, lounges and even showers for premium classes. We won't see any of that on the A321XLR. This will be a simpler flight experience, with less space in the galleys and around toilets. For some, this could become very noticeable on longer flights. Some airlines may still install good business class products, especially if they intend to market flagship or particularly long routes. American Airlines and United Airlines have not confirmed cabins yet, but American has hinted that business class would feature lie flat seats. JetBlue will offer its mint business class, as it is with the A321LR. Stellia Aerospace is also designing another new version of narrow-body business seating. Crew, though, will notice the lack of space the most. Most wide bodies have dedicated crew rest areas with sleeping space. This will not be possible on the A321. Both the FAA and EASA have regulations for crew rests, but for the flight lengths for the A321XLR, airlines can most likely avoid this. We may see some blocked seats on longer flights, but not much more. The A321XLR could change a lot about how we fly currently, and there's certainly more we could discuss here. Are you looking forward to the new possibilities, or would you prefer wide bodies for longer flights? Let us know your thoughts about this and the wider possibilities and adoption of the A321XLR in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. And don't forget to click the link in the description for 83% off your Surfshark VPN.